Okay. So in tail of motion, we can compare with it our daily life examples. You know how birds are flying? By wings. By the How how the how it is flying up? How how it is going up? Sir, so with the help, even the movement of the wings. Sir, I am sir. It is pushing. Oh, see, how is it going up? Better flying up. How is going up? Because its wings will up, uh, the, will push wings, the air down. Because that it go up. You know that rocket is going up. How is rocket is going fast and very very fastly and very uh, moves towards the space. We what force? How is moving? Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, but it's giving us. Yeah, but the rocket launching. So due to the fire, yeah, which is on bottom of the rocket, sir. Yes, what happens then actually? So it heated it heats up the uh, engine inside the rocket, sir, which results in movement of uh, rocket to the. Highest level, sir. Yes. So when the fuel is burning inside the rocket, that will be coming out. So because of that force, the rocket is going in the opposite direction. Okay, rocket is going in the opposite direction. I ask one question: If your friend is giving a slap in your face, in your chin, what will you do? I can't understand the question, sir. If a if a friend is beating you, they giving a slap, nice slap in the face. Yes, sir. Will you do? Of course, it is your enemy. What will you do? Sir, slap again. Slap again. Slap again. We are stopping there. You are getting angry, no? Get very yes, angry. Yes. Yes. So, if a Enemy is giving a slap. That is an action. That is an action, and you are reacting to that action. You are reacting to the action and giving an again, again, again you are giving a force. Again, you are giving a slap to the enemy. So for every action, there is a reaction. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. For every action, there is a equal and opposite reaction. But it is an opposite react. But it is in the opposite side. Okay. So for every action. There is an equal and opposite reaction. Ah, this is the tail of motion. This is the tail of motion. Okay. So you are now you are already the law of uh, tail of the motion. Newton Newton's tail of motion. That is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. So in your daily life, we can see more things. We can see more things. Okay. Amita. Are you ready? Are you telling the book? You can read the book, Amita. Yes, sir. See, take page. After take page number. Sir, one twenty-two. This I'll I'll scroll up. One twenty-two, sir. Yes, 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 yes. See, the tail of motion is there. So here we can do several examples. So we'll see the figure there. There is a gun and the pistol and the bullet is there. So when a bullet is coming out of the gun, the experience the gun will be experiencing a back force. It is not example for the Newton's tail of motions. Okay. So when an when an force is applied for every action, there is an opposite and there is an reaction. That the, but the reaction will be in the Opposite directions, and the force exerted by this equal to both will be equal. Suppose if we take uh, two players are playing in the football ground. Okay, while taking okay, while kicking the ball, the two players are come come and smashing each other. Okay, they are they are dashing each other. What will be the consequence there? Sir, they will fall down. Both both will be get both will be get injured. Why? Because both are coming in the opposite direction and both are dashing against each other. 
so there will be a some injury to other what you, but they are clashing once once in the opposite directions they are both in the coming in the opposite directions yeah but they are both are giving the equal forces so both will be get a injured okay i'm going to start in my first era first law of two laws of motion yes sir 9.5 third law of motion the first two laws of motion tell us how an applied force changes the motion and proved us with a method of determining the force the third law of motion states that when one object exerts a force on another object the second object in uh, instantaneously exerts a force back on the first these two forces just wait, just are just wait just wait mera just wait suppose you are rolling two balls two footballs on the ground first ball is going and you are, uh, you are leaving the second ball and you are giving uh, you are hitting the second first ball you see second ball okay so the second ball, first ball second ball will give force to the first ball but the first ball also gives opposite force to the second ball thank you so second ball will be slowed down so this is because of the scale law of motions for so for the first law gives action that is hitting to the second uh, second ball gives the second ball giving the action to the first ball so uh, the second ball is hitting the first ball thank you so after hitting the uh, first ball the first ball gives the reactions thank you it will go fast and give the opposite reactions the second ball will be the second ball will be slowed down okay this is the example for the newton's law of motion yes sir these two forces are always equal in magnitude but opposite in directions these forces act on all different objects and never on the same object in the game of football sometimes we sometimes we while looking at the football and trying to knock it with a great of force collide with a player to the opposite team both feels hurt because each applies a force to other in other words this uh, there a pair of force and not just one force the two opposition opposing forces are also known as action and reaction forces let us consider two spring balances connecting together as shown in figure 9.10 you know what is spring the... balance i see the spring balance all of you sir yes sir it is used to friction sir yes that yeah the old merchants who was buying the old plastics and kayangal sir and all that you know that is called spring balance you are taking the two spring balances and you are pulling um, locking in the uh, pulling in the opposite directions so they will show the both will show the same masses okay so you can see the diagram of the figure there let's continue mabida yes sir the fixed end of balance b is attached with a rigid support like a wall when a force is applied through the free end of the spring balance a it is observed that both the spring balances show the same readings on their scales it means that the force exerted by the springs balance a on the balance b is equal but opposite in direction to the force exerted by balance b on balance a any of these two forces can be called an action and the other as reaction this gives us an alternative statement of the third law of motion that is to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction under end of you this is law under end of you to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction this is the third law of motion third law of motion is only single line first two laws will be two two lines but for third law only single and two laws very very simplest law and very very useful law for in our daily life we are most using this law you are seeing all the three laws you know so to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction this is the third law of motion okay continue ma however it must be reminded that the action and reaction always acts on two different objects uh simulatorily simultaneously simultaneously at yeah, the same time the same time. see the uh, see the figure there here uh, there we are taking the two spring balances there one is uh, named as a and another is named as b so one uh, spring that is b is fixed with the wall 
fixed with the wall and you are connecting the opposite in the opposite one that is we are having two hooks no so two hooks are joined there and you are pulling the side a the top of the side a so both will show the same masses but it will be in the opposite directions okay so one is action and another one is reactions so here we are giving the actions and this side showing the reactions okay so action and reaction force are equal and but they are in the opposite directions yes continue suppose you are standing at rest and instead to start walking on a road you must accelerate and thus requires a force in accordance with the second law of motion which is the force is this the muscular effort you exert on the road is it the direction we stand to move no you push the road below backward the road exerts an equal and opposite force on your feet to make you move forward it is in this paragraph they explain that wait wait ma so from the second law of motion we know that we want to for any object want to move you want to give a force it may be a device or anything we are we are doing that we are giving a muscular force but that, 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 that is not a good one here we are giving a force that is we are pushing the ground on the floor that ground is giving an opposite reactions that is we are taking a, a force from the ground so this is the happening so, so if we, action is from our foot like you are so uh, we are pushing the road below backwards so that the road will push you over leg in the opposite directions then only you can able to walk so the, so the road exerts an equal and opposite force on your feet to make you move forward. that is how much force you are giving to the road the same force will be given in the opposite directions okay sir ajita sri can read sir yes okay that la okay amida you can ajita sri can read next one by yes. can read okay. it is important to note that even to the actions and reaction forces always equal in magnitude these forces may not produce accelerations of equal magnitude this is because each force acts on a different object that may have a different mass when a gun is fired it exerts a forward force on the bullet the bullet exerts an equal and opposite force on the gun the results in the recoil the gun since the gun has just, just, much greater just wait just, just wait just wait so here if you trigger the gun the bullet will be coming out while bullet is coming out what happens because the, comparing to the bullet and the gun gun has the more mass okay so in the previous paragraph here read, uh, read that it is important note that even So the action and the action force are always equal in magnitude. This force may not produce acceleration of equal magnitudes. This is because each force acts on a different object and may have different masses. So when a gun is fired, while the gun is coming out, it exerts a force on the you know, bullet. That is, the gun is giving a forward force to the bullet. And bullet is coming out. That is, exerts exerts is coming out. The bullet exerts on an equal and opposite force on the gun. So when the bullet is coming out, it gives the some force backward. So this results in the recoil. That is coming. That is the gun is coming coming back. That is called as the recoil of the gun. This called the recoil. Since the gun has much greater mass mass than the bullet, the acceleration of the gun is much less. Because comparing to the mass of the gun and the bullet, gun has the larger mass than bullet. So that acts then while coming back, the acceleration of the gun will be very less comparing to the bullet okay so here a tail of motion can also illustrate when a sailor jumps on a for on a rowing boat as sailor jumps from forward the force on the boat moves it backwards you know what is my boat suppose a boat is standing on the floor say sorry, sorry standing on the shore standing on the shore okay you are you are jumping out to the shore what do you happen you are coming you are coming forward while you are coming forward the boat will moving back whoever, whoever uh, travel in the boat can experience this one that uh, when you jump it the boat will go back like yeah so now the boat the boat is, boat is going um, moving away from the shore away from the shore 
okay or that is the tail of motion the example for the tail of motion okay so when a gun is fired it exerts a forward force exert means giving a uh, going out it exerts a forward force on the bullet the bullet exerts an equal and opposite force on the gun since the gun has a much greater mass than the bullet the acceleration of the gun is much less than the acceleration of the bullet the tail of motion can also illustrated when a sailor jumps out of a rowing boat as the sailor jumps forward the force on the bullet moves it backward thank you all thank you all okay the accuracy sir yes see here the uh, next one see see the, see the, see the board exams here when the sailor is uh, moving towards the shore he is jumping he is jumping out of the boat when he is jumping out of the boat what happens he is coming forward the boat uh, because of his force the boat is going back thank you all so as the sailor as the sailor jumps from in the forward direction the boat moves uh, move back that is the boat is moving away from the shore here yeah, another example is that i explain this so let us take you know what is you mean by trolley trolley am theriyum or vandi mar irukum but here let us two cylinders to stand on two separate cars you want know, this is a car see the cars there it is made up of two uh, uh, board with the wheels this is what is called is called vandi da vandi da car nu solrom okay va so two uh, one boy and girl is standing on the cart okay va Give them a bag full of sand or some other heavy object. So see that by uh, that, that is the bag that consists of is a, is a sand or you can take any heavy object like that. So you are standing on the cart. The two uh, two students are uh, standing on the cart and they are going to catch that object, like a heavy object. So. you have far over indications you can draw a white line in between the two cards to see the motions okay or you can mark anything okay now place two cylinders on one card and one on another card the second law of motion can be seen as their arrangement would be so different acceleration for same force so i begin divide depending upon the mass there will be acceleration will be there is there so this one gives the second law of motion the cart shows the can be uh, in the circuitry can be consumed using a 12 mm or 18 mm thick plywood board of about 50 cm or 100 cm with two pairs of hard bar bearing wheels or we can use the skating or skating boards also are not effective because it is difficult to maintain straight line motions so we can't use the skating uh, skating here because we can't use this skating for the straight line motions okay wow. so here you are making this cart so this is example for the second law of motion third law of motion just like now i am going to play a video watch it i watch that video Able to see the audio of the video, sir. What? Huh? Sir, the voice is not audible. Sir. Voice is very low. I can only okay, able to hear that. Okay. Let's see. The people. Historians will tell you that modern science started in 1687 when Sir Isaac Newton first. Now it is audible, I think. Yes, yes. It's audible. Tells us three laws of motion. Newton loved to observe the world around him and was able to use his insight to explain how everything in the universe he knew about moved, from cannonballs in flight to ships at sea to the planets far out in space. Now, as we've been watching this Newton's cradle toy move, do you think it's been spontaneously moving the way it is, or do you think there's been a
First thing you're going to do is you're going to take your paper, especially with modern technology and movies. The art of science is really making sure you're not fooling yourself. All of the scientific methods can boil down to making sure you're looking at what's really going on. What are the real facts? Let me show you how you can discover these fundamental laws for yourself and test them easily at home. Let's do an experiment. For this first experiment, it can get a little messy, so keep some paper towels near you. So, first experiment, this is a, a, a small aluminum tray. I'm using it as a, a spill bowl, something to keep the mess down. You're gonna need a cup with about three quarters full of water. You can put it right in the middle of the spill tray. You're gonna need a paper plate, an egg, and a, a TP roll. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper plate, you're gonna put it directly on top of the cup. Now you wanna do it as centered as possible. You can actually push down and feel where the edges of the cup are. And then you're gonna take your TP roll and you're gonna put it right in the middle. Finally, you're gonna put your egg sideways, gently on top. And the reason I'm putting it sideways is because some eggs will fall right through the paper towel roll, are, are, are too small for it, or it'll sit too far inside and it'll affect the system. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hit this paper plate out to the side. Now, I want you to be careful with this because if you're not controlled, if you hit the cup of water or you hit the egg, you're going to make a real big mess over here to the left. So be careful with your swipe. I'm going to now hit this in three, two, one. Drop straight down, landing in my cup of water. Why do you think it fell, the egg fell straight down in my cup of water instead of flying left with the paper plate and TP roll. So, it has inertia, it has mass, it has weight. The force applied to it was gravity, pulling it straight down into the cup of water. Well, this is a great example of Newton's first law of motion. This was perfectly stable, nothing was moving until I acted upon it with a force, my hand hitting it. So I hit the paper, uh, the paper plate and the TP roll. I hit that with a force, they flew left. Now, the egg, I didn't hit the egg, I only hit the things underneath it. So the egg, having no force coming out this way, only has the force of gravity pulling it straight down. So it fell straight down with gravity into my cup of water. Newton's first law states that an object at rest will stay at rest or an object in motion will stay in motion in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted upon by a force. This law can be observed when a tablecloth is whipped from underneath a dinner setting while the dishes remain in place. Because the dishes were initially at rest, they will continue in their state of rest. Likewise, when a fast-moving subway car comes to a quick stop, passengers inside continue traveling at the previous uniform speed of the car and get thrown forward. This property of matter to remain at rest or in motion is known as inertia. Newton's first law is often termed the law of inertia. Remember, an object in motion will stay in motion in a straight line at a constant speed unless it's acted upon and stops with a force, or an object in rest will stay at rest. This will not move until I act upon it with a force. So Newton's second law is a relationship between the amount of force and the amount of speed. So if I apply a force to a penny, it'll slide across the table. If I apply more force to it, it'll go a lot faster. Mathematically stated, a moving object's acceleration equals the net force acting upon the object divided by the mass of the object. This equation dictates that acceleration is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. When force increases, acceleration increases. And when mass increases, acceleration decreases. For our second experiment, all you're gonna need is a balloon. Now, blow it up as big as you can. What do you think will happen if I let this go? 
<laughs> I went all the way out the room. Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, if I push down on this table, it's also pushing up on me, lifting me up. Now, it's a lot easier to see in that balloon example. So when I fill the balloon up with air, as the air is being released out of the butt end, the balloon is flying forward. So all that air being released is actually propelling it forward. So it's pushing back and the air is pushing on it. Same thing with a rocket. So rockets can get into space because we have an explosion that pushes out a ton of gas. And all that gas pushing out pushes a force on the rocket, which allows it to propel out into outer space. Newton's third law is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law of motion states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. In other words, when as I told you, whenever an object exerts a force on the second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on so that only I get this told the example that a friend is beating or enemy is beating, he will beat again. So this is the force. You can take as an example. So whenever an object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts the equal and opposite force on the first object. This is the basis of the law. Yes. When one object pushes against another, the force applied by the first object is opposed by the force of the second object that is equal in magnitude, but in the opposite direction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite re. So in balloon experiment, the balloon is going up. How it is going up? Because the air is coming out of the balloon. The air is expelling out. So the air is giving the force. It is coming out. Because of this air is coming out, this is action. So the, ba the body is moving in the opposite directions. Sorry, the balloon is moving in the opposite directions. The action. These equal but opposite action-reaction pairs define force in the physical world. When you exert a force against a wall, the wall pushes back with an equal force but in the opposite direction. When you take a step and push your foot down against the floor, the floor exerts a force back up to your foot. Every action of force has an equal but opposite reaction. Newton's laws of motion describe the motion of all objects on Earth, and even all objects in the universe. They all move according to these three laws. So, for this last experiment, we're going to use some coins and a smooth tabletop. Now, think about your tables in your house uh, or your countertops. If you have a nice stone or granite smooth countertop in your kitchen, that'll work really well, or a smooth wood tabletop works also. Um, if you're worried about scratching your surface, put a layer of wax paper down and tape it down on every side so it's nice and taut. Then you won't you can uh, won't scratch your table. So for this experiment, this will explain and show all three laws of motion. So I have here a collection of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Uh, so for the first experiment, you can just flick a coin across your table. Now you should notice that it will always go in a straight line. I'm applying one force, and that means that it is getting kicked in one direction, and it'll travel in a straight line. Now remember, Newton's first law is an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon by a force, and it'll travel in the same direction at the same speed. So these traveled in one direction, but they all stopped. So they didn't travel forever. Why do you think they stopped? Well, if you said friction, you're right. If you take your hands together, push them together, and rub them, you'll feel your hands heating up. So on Earth, we have gravity. It's pushing things to the table, and it's causing frictional force on here, slowing these down. But they are traveling in a straight line. So for Newton's second law, it states that uh, for uh, every force, if I apply more force, I'm going to get more speed. So if I take these and I flick it lightly or I flick it very hard, one will travel significantly farther. 
So the one I flick harder, apply more force, it'll go a lot faster. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if you take two coins of the same type, like two nickels, and I put them close to each other and I do a gentle flick, this one stayed in its place and kicked this one away. So while I applied the force to this one, it transferred its force to here. So it hit, applied the force there, and this coin applied an equal and opposite force here, stopping this coin. Let's show that again. It stops, it doesn't go any farther. Equal and opposite force applied. Yeah, when the first coin is uh, tossed, uh, given force, it hits the second coin. But second coin also giving the opposite force, so first coin is stopped there itself. So second coin, second coin is moving. So this is the uh, tail of motion. So for every action that is equal on the opposite, a reaction is there. So for the last one, I want you to see the difference of coins. So if I'm using a penny and I try to hit a dime, what do you think is going to happen? You think it's going to go farther or shorter? Well, that went much farther. That went really far. And the penny didn't even really stop. That's because there wasn't enough and force on this to stop this penny. This has more weight, has more force. So if I use the biggest difference, a quarter to a dime, this should go flying. They both keep moving forward. The penny, the dime went even farther. Now, what happens if I try to do that reverse and I try to hit the quarter with my penny? This even went backwards. It goes, shoots off one direction and the quarter doesn't go very far. That's because the quarter is a lot heavier and I need more force to move it. Here's a great game that you can play and practice the three laws of motion. So all you're gonna need for this game is some string, balloons, uh, painter's tape, and a straw. The reason we use painter's tape instead of other tape is because I can stick it to the balloons and pull it off easily without the, uh, if I use duct tape or something stronger, it'll actually just rip open the balloons. So we don't want that. So what you're gonna do uh, is I drew a little line in the center here and with two of these, you can put two balloons on and have them fight, we call it balloon jousting. But since I'm here by myself, I'm just gonna show you the how far I can get in one side. So what you're gonna do is you take your balloon and blow it up as big as you want. I'm gonna hold it and then I'm gonna tape it to my straw. Now change your angles, change your mess, uh, see what, what effects you can do to have it change. I'm going to start it over off the left here, and when I let it go, it'll launch way off to the side, blow right across this. Now if you have no, two uh, balloons, they'll be battling. Friend cracker that is using the body. What are you Cracker, strain cracker, strain boom, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And the cracker is doing what are you doing? Train or train on the computer, much not rocket number, but as divide rocket again, but the ingla. Are those same needles of the tail of motion now? For this center position, which I've marked here. Two, one, so go. have fun with this. Come on, blue. Woo! Mine even flew off, but I am on his half. I won the ground today. Change the type of balloon, change the angle that you put it on, changing a few factors and see how it differs, how long it'll go across your string. Thank you for participating in another Lab Rad STEM at Home. As always, happy sciencing. So I've seen the video of you. Yes. So what yes. are the what what are you inferred from the video? So they are doing some experiments on the laws of motion. Yes. yes they are doing the not only the laws of motion. They have the they have seen they have shown all three laws of motion. All the three laws of motion they have shown there. Seen that they have showed that. Okay. So. So now we have seen uh, this uh, tail of motion. 
So the law of motion says that for every action there is an opposite uh, and equal reaction will be there. Okay. Yes, so the balloon experiment, the balloon is uh, going away. I have seen that balloon, how, how it is going because the air is expelled out of the balloon. If, if you going inflated the straight. balloon with the air, giving more air inside the balloon, and you left the balloon, the balloon will be flying in some day in different directions. Because we are, because I already know that in chemistry, air has uh, more number of spaces. The intermolecular force of attraction is very heavy, very long. Okay, so gas can move in any, any direction. So because of the opposite direction, the balloon is also moving in the different directions. If you take the balloon, if you fix the balloon in the thread, and you give the balloon, the balloon is moving in the opposite direction to the air. So it is going in here, it is starting as like a train. Okay. So uh, I already told that in the D body crackers also, you see the D body crackers, you are, uh, you are cracking the rocket, or you are getting the parachute, or you are in the train, all uh, depends upon the Newton's tail of motion only. Okay. Any doubt in this tail of motion? Who is having doubt? Yes, 